Hi everybody, welcome back, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to motivate the idea and need of linear algebra, okay? And it's a complex topic, something that is very, very difficult if you look at it from a university point of view and really study all there is to, to do. Uh, not gonna go nearly much into that depth. I'm going to use what we need from it to motivate machine learning and carry on in our journey as well as we can. Of course, you could spend hours and years going down this particular route, looking at linear algebra, even just from a regression point of view, there's a lot here, but we're not gonna do that. I'm going to motivate it as the, the need for doing multiple things at the same time. So if you look at our betas here, we have beta zero, beta one, beta two, beta three, and you know whatever more or less we happen to have for a particular model, this is just what we chose. So let's think of them now, instead of these individual components, and they still are their individual components, we're not gonna change this true formula at all, but we are going to rewrite it a little bit so that it's more generic, okay? This is very specific that we have to write out all of these things. Pretend that we had, you know, a uh, hundred different beta values, beta four, beta five, beta six, up until beta hundred. And so you would have to write out all of the addition and multiplication of of the slope value the beta times the the corresponding input now if we group them into what we call a vector okay so and if you're from physics you'll hear like a vector is a, a man has a magnitude and a direction that's true but i'm not really going to worry about that uh, point of view right now i'm just going to think about it as an ordered collection of elements because that's really what it is it's it's pretty much just an array really it's an array with some mathematical properties that's all Okay, so uh, if, if I denote beta, okay, I'm just going to write it with this uh, vector sign at the top. So beta is equal to beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and I didn't quite write enough there. So we write it with these square brackets here, which just says, okay, this beta is made up of, say, these four things. And I would write it like in R4 which means that there is four different components in it and they're all real values, okay? So beta naught is a real value anywhere from negative infinity to infinity, that's all I mean. Uh, so is beta one, so is beta two, so is beta three. So that's our beta vector. It's our ordered collection of the beta values. We could also get our some input. So this is just one person's input, whatever they happen to be. So X is equal to well, what is this thing? Okay, so if I'm looking at the equation here, it's x1, x2, x3, except if I was just to write that, it's kind of sloppy because, it's not sloppy, but it's kind of annoying because then this value is, for our model, it's in R3. And then we're not working in the same dimension, which there's obviously times for that, but it's a lot easier most of the time. If I was just to note this as, say, one, if I was to write this value as one, or I could also say x0 and always let x0 be 1. I'm just saying that the first component of this is 1, so that you can think of this as times 1, and that's that kind of fits well together. We'll see why that's important shortly. So then this thing would also be a vector in R4. Okay, and now I'm going to, going to very quickly show you that we can rewrite this equation, the equation for our line, so it's still going to be an output as in y hat is still going to be a number in uh, just a scalar, which means any value from negative infinity to infinity. It's still going to be that, except we can rewrite this equation as y hat is equal to beta dot dot x, where the dot product of something, if I was just to have two different vectors, say that if I was to have the vector of one, two, and three, and then if I was to do dot that with four, five, six, sorry for the small writing, that is equal to them, like element-wise, multiplication separated by a sum, a sum. And that's confusing when you say it aloud, but really easy when you just write it out, is it's one times four. I grabbed this component and this component, I multiplied them, and I separate the different elements from a sum. So I do add, I plus that with two and five. So that's this one and this one. And then finally I add three 
and 6. And so that's 1 times 4, 4, plus 2 times 5 is 10, so sum now is 14. And then 3 times 6 is 18, so 4 plus 10 plus 18 happens to be 32. And so this value is 32. So if I was to write this explicitly, you would see that I had y hat, so that's still just some value, y hat, is equal to beta. Well, what is beta? That is, in our case, beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Okay, so that's exactly the same as before. And then dot that with x naught, which is, you know, it just denoted as 1. Okay, for simplicity, make it 1. And then x1, x2, x3. And then that turns out to be exactly the same thing as the line above. It's going to be exactly this y hat thing right there. So we can write this again just to make sure you see it. It's beta naught times 1, which is just beta naught, beta naught times beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3. Okay, the exact same formula, I just wrote it in a more generic way, so that if we were to change the dimensions, if we were to add more in, uh, variables, like x4, x5, x6, then we would have corresponding betas, beta 4, beta 5, beta 6, but the formula would still be exactly the same from this point of view. It's still just beta dot x. Even though the beta and the x are a little bit different, it still encompasses the same thing. So hopefully that motivated the idea of linear algebra. I will I will write this down as the dot product, okay? It's an inner product, which I'm not gonna go into in linear algebra. You can look all about that if you wanna go down that road. And hopefully that made sense. I'll see you in the next video.